Well, hi there and welcome to Lakeside Church. We are delighted that you're here with us today and we hope that you're looking forward to all that's to come. Now, our service will be started in just over 10 minutes time. So before that happens, we've got some different things that will come up on your screen that will give you a little flavor of a few things currently taking place through the week, along with a little video asking you to consider what your next step in your faith journey might possibly be. And if you're new to Lakeside Church and want to find out more, then we would love to begin a conversation with you. So please do get in touch with us. The best way to do that is to go onto our website and onto the Contact Us page that you'll find at the bottom. Fill in the online form by ticking the appropriate box or boxes on there and sending that back in to us. And in return for that, we would love to send out one of our pens to you as a little gift. Hey, we all love a good pen, don't we? So stick around with us over these next few minutes to find out more as we get ready to start on the hour. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Well, hi there. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Richard. I'm the lead pastor here at Lakeside Church. And over these next few minutes, I want to ask you the simple question, what's next? So what exactly do I mean by what's next? What well, I'm asking you very simply to think about what's the next step that you need to take in your faith journey. I've got some possible suggestions for you that I'm trusting will encourage you and in the process help you discover more of the amazing plans that God has for you. So just lean in and stay with me over these next few minutes because maybe 
just maybe God is wanting to speak to you. So to start with, maybe you're someone who's completely new to Christianity or at this stage you're simply exploring what it's all about because with all that's taking place around us right now with this pandemic, it's got you questioning some of the bigger issues of life including things like mortality and God and is he real? And if so, then why is he letting all these things take place? Or maybe questions like that. You know, they're such great questions to ask. And if that's you, then can I ask you to consider joining with other like-minded people on our next online Alpha course? You know, it's such a great way to ask all these questions and many others besides. And the beauty about it being online right now is that you can do it all from the comfort and the safety of your own home. Now, if you're not quite sure what Alpha is, then I want to encourage you to go to our website. There's a link on the screen to that for you. And you'll find more details about this along with a simple online form that you can fill in and send to us where one of our team will get back in touch with you to tell you more. I really can't recommend that one enough for you. Or maybe you're someone who's new to Lakeside in that you've started watching our Sunday services online. And if that's you, then, then thank you. And we hope that you've been finding them helpful. But what's next? Where do you go from here? Well, just like I said before, Alpha might be the next step also for you to take. Or you might be someone who's already been through that or you've got a good understanding of the Bible and, and all of that, but you're wanting to find a church that you can think about calling your home. And right now, Lakeside is where you're thinking that might be. Well, to begin with, if you haven't yet already done so, please can I ask you to get in touch with us as we would love to get to know you and begin that conversation with you. And there's a number of different ways that you can do this. You can either drop a comment in the chat facility here on our Facebook page and we can then get back to you. Another way to get in touch with us is through our website. Take a moment to fill in the online form on our Contact Us page and then just press Submit. Alternatively, you can email me direct at the address that's on your screen right now, but whichever one you choose, we would love to hear from you. And if you do that, then we'd love to send you one of our lakeside pens as a simple way of saying thanks. Now, we also want to encourage you to think about getting involved in one of the different things taking place through the week. Maybe stepping up your prayer life is the next step for you and so joining us online on Tuesday evenings as we pray together for our town and for one another is what God's calling you to right now. Or maybe it's starting to, to serve in one of our many teams that operate through the week or at least will do once we start meeting back in person in the days to come. Or maybe it's to get plugged into our life groups that take place through the week. You see, we believe that the bigger the church is, then the smaller we need to become that circles are actually better than rows. And for us here at Lakeside, connecting with others through the week in smaller groups is so helpful in not only growing in your faith and understanding of Jesus, but also in connecting with others and developing friendships that help spur you on to become all that God has called you to be. Now, with the current pandemic and the lockdown restrictions that we've been facing, there aren't as many life groups operating as normal, but they are continuing to grow. We're getting more up and running. And uh, please keep checking out the Life Groups page on our website to see what other groups have been added and will continue to be added. And if you're someone who's been at Lakeside for some time, then this might still be the next step for you to either get involved in one of these, or if you're a partner, then maybe it's time to consider having a go at leading one for a season. To use the words that we heard from Pastor David recently, Maybe it's time to take a risk and to share your lunchbox, the gifts that God has placed within you with others and to put them to use in blessing them. But whatever it might be for you, please have a chat with Pastor Matt if that's the case and he'll gladly tell you more and help you with what you need to do. You know, the Christian life is a journey and although there are times on any journey where you stop for a while to take in the surroundings and the views around you, you're never meant to get stuck there but to keep on journeying and discovering new things along the way. And we want that to be your experience with us here at Lakeside. So to come back to that question I asked you right at the start, what's your next step? Because wherever you are, there's one for you to take. And I simply want to encourage you to go for it and to step out and step into more of all that God has for you. Because we believe that the best is yet to come. I look forward to hearing from you.
Okay, well we hope that's given you a little flavour for some of the things taking place here at Lakeside. It's all a little bit different at the moment, as you can imagine, whilst we're in this season of lockdown. So the best way to keep in touch and up to date is to follow us on our social media pages. The details are on the screen for you. But please know that we're so much more than what simply happens on a Sunday. So don't be shy in getting in touch with us at any time as we'd love to hear from you. But we've got just a few minutes now before our service begins. So now is a great time to get your kettle on, get that cup of tea or coffee ready, depending on your preference. It's going to be a great time together and we're delighted that you're here with us for it. God bless you. to give you a huge welcome to Lakeside Church and to today's online service. We're absolutely delighted that you've chosen to spend this time with us and wherever you might be watching this from, we are so looking forward to connecting with you. Yeah, and we have a great 50 minutes planned which is going to include a time of some worship. We've got some things to share with you about our Christmas programme as we're now officially into December. And then a little later on, I'm looking forward to bringing the first message in our Christmas sermon series that I'm praying will be a real encouragement to you all, so make sure you stick around with us for it. Yeah, if it's your first time with us, then we would love to find a way of getting a little gift out to you, which is one of our Lakeside pens. So please make sure you let us know that you're here um, by introducing yourself in the online chat, or maybe by popping over to our website, and at the bottom where it says contact us, simply fill in the online form and we can get in touch with you to get this posted out. It's our little way of saying thank you for being with us. Yeah, now please don't be shy and do that because we would love to hear from you. 
but we really believe it's going to be a great time together and so whether this is all new to you and you're simply checking us out or whether you're someone for whom you would call Lakeside your home let's all prepare our hearts shall we as we invite the Holy Spirit to come and meet with us right now will you pray with us yeah Lord we need you today Lord and we just ask that you would come and you would meet each of us where we're at in our homes Lord God whether we're on our own or watching with our families you're here with us and we just pray that you be blessed by our worship now in Jesus name Amen Amen God is fighting for us, God is on our side, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus you are here, carrying our burdens, covering our shame, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus, you are here. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. God is fighting for us, God is on our side, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus you are here, carrying our burdens, covering our shame, He is overcome, yes, He is overcome, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus, you are here. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. I will. Shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. We will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting Shouting out one more time. God is, God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemy 
You are fighting for us. You are on our side. You have overcome. Despite it all, you have overcome. Yes, you have.
Yeah. 
kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory Father, we thank you for your presence here with us. Thank you that your Jehovah Shema, the one who is always there, is there, Lord, that you're here with us right now. And I ask that you would continue in this time that we've got together to speak to our hearts, to speak to our minds, to speak into the situations and the circumstances that we find ourselves up against. And that through it all, Father, we will continue to know your peace and your love and your comfort that will come and guard our hearts and our minds and help us to, to believe that the best is yet to come. So come and inspire us, come and fill us with faith. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Well, in a few moments, I'm gonna be sharing the first message in our new sermon series. So make sure that you stay with us for that. But just before that happens, let me take a few moments of your time to share some things with you about what's happening over the next few weeks as we think about our Christmas program. Now, first of all, as you'll have seen over the past few days, hopefully anyway, each morning on our Facebook and Instagram pages, we're posting up our daily advent calendar where there are lots of prizes to be won. So make sure that you engage with us on that and join in all the fun. And also think about 
how you can share them across your own social media pages and invite others as well, your friends, to join in with us as it's not just for those who are a part of the Lakeside family already. Secondly, following the recent government announcement about which tiers we're in now that the national lockdown has ended, we're pretty confident that we can go ahead with our carols in the car park services across the weekend of Friday the 18th through to Sunday the 20th of this month. So please, if you haven't already done so, head over to our website and get yourselves booked in for one of the four services that we've got planned. Let's be thinking about who we can invite to come along to them also. They're going to last for about one hour. And what we're asking you to do also is to think about how you can decorate your car once you're on the car park with LEDs and all of that as we're going to have a prize at each service for the best dressed car. So have a think about what you can do to take part in that as it's going to be a lot of fun. And like we've said previously, we really need the weather to be dry on each of these nights. So again, can I ask you to be praying now that that will truly be the case for us. And then the last thing regarding the Christmas program is to say that on Christmas Eve on our Facebook and YouTube channels, we're planning on premiering our Nativity Play, what we're calling this year our Alternativity. So keep a listen out over the next few weeks for the actual times that that will be taking place. Okay, two other things to mention very quickly. On Wednesday the 13th of January, in the evening, we're starting our next online alpha course. We've already got a few people who've signed up for it, and we'd love to see more come on that. So if you're watching this and you're new to church and Christianity, or maybe you're on a journey of discovery regarding what life is all about, and you'd love to find a forum whereby you can ask all those questions that you've got going through your mind in a safe environment, then likewise, please do get in touch with us. You can head over to our alpha page on our website and take a moment to drop us your name and email or mobile number and Sue who heads the, the uh, Alpha course for us will then get back in touch with you. Consider this your official invitation. We would so love you to join with us on that. And then lastly, as always, can I say a huge thank you to you all for your ongoing faithfulness and generosity in the giving of your tithes and offerings. You know, it's such an important part of what it means to follow Jesus and we never take it for granted the sacrifices that you make in this regard. The different ways that you can give are on the screen for you, but thank you once again to you all. Okay, that's all the notices for today. As always, just before we get ourselves ready to hear God's word, there's just one more thing to do. That's our online mini mingle. We're gonna take the next 60 seconds to drop a high five emoji in the online chat to let us know you're here with us or send someone a text if you've got their details in your phone. And if you're new to Lakeside, then please do remember to let us know that you're here with us by giving us a simple thumbs up so we can get in touch and look to get that all important and much coveted lakeside pen out to you. Okay, let me count us in. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Well, we are well and truly into December, which I guess for many of you watching this right now means that your preparations for the big day itself are well and truly underway. The Turk has been ordered, yes. Just drop a comment or a thumbs up emoji in the chat to let us know if that's the case. Your decorations have all been put up now, yes. Well, I know some of you have because I've seen the pictures you've been putting up on Facebook. All your presents have been brought by now, 
Well, maybe not just yet, because let's face it, the shops have been shut, haven't they? Unless you've been going mad on Amazon, of course, that is. But it's Christmas, and all these things are important parts of the build-up, aren't they? And what helped to make it a really special time. But I want to ask you the question this morning, how can you really make Christmas count? What can you and I be doing so it really does become, just like the song tells us, the most wonderful time of the year? Because if you're not careful in the midst of all the busyness and the added pressures that this time of year naturally brings, the dinners, the shopping, the expense and all that kind of stuff, not to mention this pandemic that we're all trying to navigate our way through still, the danger is that we can very easily miss out on the joy that comes from celebrating the real reason for the season. And that is, as we know, the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And I don't know how many times in the 27 years almost that I've been a Christian now that I've looked back and recognised that perhaps I've placed a little bit too much emphasis on all the peripheral stuff that the world seems to place high value on, which isn't bad, but felt as a result of that that I'd somehow kind of cheated God in some way by not giving him more of a focus during it. Now we're kicking off a brand new three-part sermon series today that we call in the cast of Christmas. And what we're going to be doing is looking at some of the characters that we come across within the traditional nativity story and put out a few things, some lessons that we can learn from them that will not only be of encouragement and help to us, but which I believe can help us make this a great Christmas season. And for us all to finish this year on a high, I'm sure we would all say a big yes and amen to that today. And so in this first message, I want us to take a look at three members of the cast and think about how and why we would do well to become like each of them. To begin with, I want us to hone in on the central character to the Christmas story, the one around whom the whole story is based, the baby Jesus. And I want to say to you today, be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, well, that's easier said than done, Rich. I'd love to be like Jesus, but I haven't quite mastered the art of walking on water just yet or turning water into wine or multiplying loaves and fish. Well, let me make it a bit clearer for us all. What I'm really saying to you is this. Become like a little child because let's face it, Christmas is for the children, isn't it? Or at least that's what the world might say. I wonder how many times you've heard that said already this year. Maybe you've even said it yourself. You see, let's face it, there's something magical, isn't there, about Christmas in the eyes of a little boy or a girl. I mean, I'd forgotten just how much excitement an advent calendar really can bring every morning to a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old. Even a 40-something-year-old in our house has been given an advent calendar this year, and she's like chomping at the bit every morning to see what's inside the special little sack that's been prepared for her. Now, I know what we mean when we say that Christmas is for the children, don't get me wrong. And if I'm honest, I really look forward to playing with all the kids' toys once again this year that have been very carefully chosen for me. <laughs> I mean for them. But is there a danger that when we grow up and become that little bit older, dare I say that little bit maturer, that somehow we can lose some of that excitement and enthusiasm that we once had so passionately when we were younger? Or is it just me? And let's face it, because of all the extra financial pressures, uh, pressures that so many of us are up against this year, then that can so easily divert our attention and steal something of the wonder and the mystery that surrounds the Christmas story. And so this year, I want to encourage you, irrespective of how old or young you might be, to be like Jesus, to become like a little child. Not in the sense that you have your little spats or your squabbles and all that. We don't want any of that because that's more childish, isn't it? We want to be childlike, which for me is a completely different thing altogether. I mean, didn't Jesus say to his disciples that to enter and to live in God's kingdom, they had to become like little children? You see, there's something so simple about children, isn't there? There's so much, I think, that they can teach us who are older. Things like simple dependence, not stressing out over stuff like we adults do. Things like trust and faith, that if you say you're going to do something, they, they normally believe you and they allow you just to get on and do it. Shouldn't we be like that with our Heavenly Father? And things like fun and joy, and what about their sense of wonder? You know, it's amazing how differently they view the world, isn't it? So often they see the wonder and the amazement and the beauty in things that we grown-ups often take for granted, Christmas being a case in question. 
You know, I don't know about you, but I never cease to be amazed at the words that John records in his gospel, chapter 1 and verse 14, where he tells us that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. You know, we hear it so many times every year, but it really is the most amazing story, isn't it? It's not just the stuff of movies. This really happened. Someone once wrote that history is littered with examples of men who would become gods, but there's only one example of God becoming man. I love that. Someone else described it this way, that the infinite became an infant. Just think about that. God himself, all-powerful, almighty, put all of that to one side, left the splendor and the majesty of heaven to come down to our world and step into the body of a human. Please, no one ever say to yourself that God doesn't love me. You know, he loves you way more than you could ever imagine possible. It really is the most incredible story. And Christmas reminds us of this so vividly that he loves us. And yet the danger exists, doesn't it? That we become so familiar with it that we lose something of the wonder surrounding it all. And so I want to encourage you this Christmas to find your inner child again. And where you can, in the midst of all the hustle and the bustle of everything else, to try and find the time just to press pause for, for, for just a moment and to stop and look at the baby lying in the manger and to ask God to help you see afresh the beauty and the wonder and the amazement of the incarnation and to think about what that really means for you because I really believe that if you can do that then this Christmas will carry that extra special edge for you this year. But then there's something else I want to encourage you to do, and that is also to be like the wise men, not only to be like Jesus, but also to think about how you can be like the wise men. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, we all know that giving is a major part of Christmas, isn't it? Which all stems back to those wise men who traveled from the East to bring their gifts and present them to the baby Jesus. And ever since then, the giving of presents has been a major part of all that we do. I just wonder if they knew the pressures that they were going to put people under as a result of what they did thousands of years later. They really do have a lot to answer for, don't they? But you know, the truth is that we live in a culture that in the main is far more into getting than it is into giving, isn't it? Let's be honest, anyone else discovered that? And I think that Christmas is a great example of this. I'm sure that if you've got young kids, it's no different in your home to what it is in ours that every year we get them, the younger ones that is anyway, to make a list of what they want to get for Christmas. Now, shame on me, but I don't think I've ever asked them to make a list of what they want to give. If I did, I've a feeling it wouldn't be that long. And it's the same whenever you see someone, isn't it? In that you ask them, what did you get? I don't think anyone has ever asked me, what did you give? It doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? But you know, for us who are believers, I think that we have an opportunity to turn this a little bit on its head and to give out a different message to those around us, one where we make the giving rather than the getting our focus. In fact, didn't Jesus say that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive? And after all, giving is right at the very heart of not just the Christmas message, but the gospel itself, John 3 and uh, verse 16, for God so loved the world, you and I, that he gave what? That he gave his only son. Think about that, he gave, you know, I'm so glad that's the case because if it wasn't, then I wonder how many of us would be here today. And so as you think about the next few weeks and your own build-up to Christmas Day, I want to encourage you to remember the blessing of giving. And by that, I'm not simply talking here about adding some extra people onto your Christmas list of who to buy presents for. I'm actually thinking about those who might be in need right now, those perhaps less fortunate than you might be yourself, Maybe those who are struggling because of the situation they find themselves in because of this pandemic. Now, I know as a church that you are so good at doing this already. We've seen that over the past nine months we've been in this lockdown period, which is why I'm so proud to be called your pastor. But you know, there are a variety of different ways that you can give that don't necessarily involve opening up your wallet or your purse. Maybe you can give up some of your time to make a simple phone call to someone or to send them a text or a card, just letting them know that you're thinking about them and praying for them. Or maybe you can put to use one of your many talents that God has given you. Maybe today God's asking you to consider what areas of need exist that you can get involved in or to think about what it is that God's placed in your hands, what is placed in your heart, in your life that can be used to bless someone else right now. 
See, the bottom line is I believe that there are a number of ways that we can each give out to others if we open ourselves up to God and ask him what he would like us to do and how he would like to use those things that he's deposited within us. Of course, the greatest gift that you can give this year is that of giving yourself over to him, surrendering your heart and life to Jesus. And if you're watching this today and you've never done that, then I want to say to you that today is the day. Don't put it off any longer. If you really want to make Christmas and take it to a whole new level, really make it count, then this is how it starts, by having Jesus in your life. And if that's you today, you're watching this and you know that that's you, please stay with me for just a little while longer because in a few minutes I'm going to give you the opportunity to pray a simple little prayer along with me, inviting Jesus into your life and letting this journey begin. But let's all give ourselves over to him throughout this month. Let's remember the blessing that comes from giving. But then there's one other member of the cast that I want us to think about just for a few moments before I finish. And that's the angels. I've already encouraged you to be like Jesus and to, to be like the wise men. I want to finish by encouraging you also to be like the angels and in particular to let your light shine. You see, I'm pretty sure that on the night of Jesus' birth, as the angels came down to tell the shepherds the good news, that the sky was lit up, something incredible. In fact, Luke tells us, doesn't he, in his gospel, that the glory of the Lord shone around them. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like. But I'm sure it must have been something amazing. Forget our fireworks displays that we've had in the past. This left all of those standing. And I'm pretty sure that the lives of those shepherds would never have been the same again after all of that. I mean, just imagine the number of times they would have told their story to others of what happened to them that night. And you know, I believe that you too can have something of a similar effect on those who you relate to in your circles. That you also can lighten up the places that you go to and are a part of. That you can make a difference in the lives of others. I really believe that. Everywhere you go now, you see more and more Christmas trees in the windows of the homes and the shops, aren't you? And more and more decorations and sets of Christmas lights are being hung up everywhere. And let's face it, some people go to great lengths, don't they, to let their Christmas light shine. I'm sure we've all seen some of the houses around the town where that's the case. But I believe that Christmas is a great opportunity, perhaps the best time of the year for us who are Christians to, to switch on the lights and to really let our light shine before others, to let them know that God is indeed alive and at work in his world. And we don't do it for our benefit, let's remember that, but simply so that they can see our good deeds and just like Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount, that they can give God the praise. I think back some years ago when I was youth pastor at my home church in Birmingham and to the youth weekends away that I took our young people on. And each time we went on one of those, we always played a game called Angels and Mortals, where each person picked someone's name out of a hat and they became that person's angel for the weekend, where their sole task was to simply bless the person whose name they had picked out, their mortal. And they were to do this with random acts of kindness over the few days that we were together. An encouraging verse from the Bible perhaps, sweets from the tuck shop, tidying up their area where they weren't around. It was such a good game. But you know, I'll never forget the way it impacted all those who were there. The way that they were just blessed by someone else. Now call me naive if you want, but I just can't help but wonder what a difference could be made if all around us in the run-up to Christmas and beyond, that there were random acts of kindness taking place all across our town, in our workplaces, in schools and colleges, in our neighbourhoods. You know, one of my favourite quotes, and you'll have heard me say this many times over, is that when the world is at its darkest, and let's face it, it's in a pretty dark place at the moment, when the world is at its darkest, then the church needs to be at its brightest. And of course, you and I are the church. And so I want to encourage you. I want to encourage every one of us this Christmas to ask God for opportunities to stand out for him, to find ways to go the extra mile and really look to make a positive difference in someone else's life. Be like the angels. Let your light shine. Okay, let me draw this first message in this series to a close. Let's make this Christmas the best one yet. Not just for us, but all those around us too. Let's be like Jesus. Find your inner child and the wonder of the incarnation once again. Be like the wise men and remember the blessing that comes from giving out. And be like the angels and let your light shine. 
As I finish, I want to give you the opportunity, like I said I would, to invite Jesus into your life because this is without doubt the greatest thing that you can ever do. And by far the only way to truly make Christmas count. And if you're watching this right now and you've never done this, then here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm going to pray a simple prayer and it's going to come up on your screen so you can pray it with me. And all you have to do is, is, is just say amen at the end and you will become a part of God's family. You'll have him come and take up residence in your heart and you'll begin to know his love and his peace in your life and the new start that he gives you. Would you pray this with me? Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that Christmas is a reminder that you came for me. And today I want to acknowledge that and in return I give my life over to you. Please forgive me of all the things I've done wrong and give me a brand new start and help me to follow you for all the remaining days of my life. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, it's important that you tell someone that you did that. If you're watching on the church online platform, you'll see a button on your screen right now that says, I want to commit my life to Jesus. Just simply click where it says raise hand and then follow the link to connect with us, which will take you through to our website where you'll see a little video message from myself encouraging you with some things to do next. And please, as you're on there, take a moment to fill in that online form and press send and we'll then get back in touch with you with a little gift to help you take some next steps. And if you're watching this on either our Facebook or YouTube channels, then again, either drop a high five um, hand in the chat to let us know that you prayed it, or you can go straight to our website. The address is on the screen for you. And like before, fill in that form so that we can also get back in touch with you. We would so love to hear from you and that you prayed that prayer. Well, thanks for your time today. Let me hand you back to our band who are going to lead us in one final song. God bless you. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness Still in your hands This is my confidence You never fail me yet I know the night won't last your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough Keep me within your still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my
still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed Your promise still stands Great is your start to our Christmas season and we want to thank you for being with us and please remember that if this has been your first time then do get in touch and we would love to hear from you and begin a conversation with you. Our online form will take you no more than a minute to complete. Yeah and don't forget to let us know if you prayed that prayer that I led you in at the end of our messages. Again we'd love to get in touch and get a little gift out to you that will be so helpful as you begin this new journey. Please know that just like we've done in previous years, that we have some of these cute little business cards available for those of you who would like them to include in any random acts of kindness you might be looking to make through this month, which also will direct people towards us here at Lakeside. So do get in touch if you'd like some. But to all of you remember that we're so much more than what happens purely on a Sunday. So please make sure you stay connected with us by following us on our social media channels or Throughout this month, we're giving away a number of prizes in our daily advent calendar. Really excited about this, so do make sure you get involved with that. Yeah, so as we draw this time together to a close right now, we pray that you let you know God's blessing over your life and that this week will be a week where you see Him move in the most amazing ways as you keep your hearts open to Him. Have the most amazing week. God bless you.